Hello boys and girls. In this video we are going to talk about the 100 year old super famous set theoretical conjecture, the continuum hypothesis and in particular some of the angles to it that I find interesting and how it relates for example to integrals. Um, I start off lightly um, with a measure theory related theorem. Um, and then I go back even more, um, ask you some, some, uh, some questions uh, about set theory that you might, may or may not consider reasonable and then try to clear up a little bit the, the mystery behind the, the uh, continuum hypothesis. So, okay, um, let me start with a funky, with a funky theorem here. So let I, capital I, be the real unit interval this is just the real numbers between 0 and 1 and of course the real numbers they have an ordinal uh, an ordering which goes from you know very very sm uh, small numbers very very negative numbers uh, through 0 to very very large numbers this is the standard numerical ordering that you also have on the integers for example um, and uh, this ordering it's then induced, of course, also on, on the interval, right? We can say in the inside the interval, the number one seventh is smaller than uh, one half, and one half is smaller than um, two thirds. Um, but now uh, we are going to consider another set beta, which is of the same size than our real um, unit, unit interval, right? The real unit interval is an uncountable set it actually has the same cardinality as the real numbers so we're going to consider um and a set beta which ha also has the size um, of the real numbers we have here actually a bijection into it and you know uh, to grant the existence of these functions um, we are in the standard um, foundational framework let's say Emilio frankel and we're going to use assumed jo choice axiom of choice whenever necessary and this, this set beta is an ordinal, so there is a well-ordered relation on this uh, uncountable set beta. So there is the smallest uh, element in, in beta, and then all the elements in beta can be compared with each other uh, in this, uh, with this well-ordered relationship. You can think of the von Neumann ordinals uh, if you want. Okay, and, and now we're going to define uh, a, a Boolean valued uh, function that is basically just the, this predicate, um, or, but you know, pull back to the, to the unit interval. So S is a function from the pairs of real numbers in the interval, right? You can think of I times I as the box and um, the inputs to S are any point in the box and this function returns zero or one and it is defined as follows. S of U and V is one or true if uh, U is smaller than V with respect not to the numerical ordering on the, in the interval but with respect to the ordering uh, on beta actually and zero or false otherwise, right? So S is a characteristic function, it really just represents this uh, is smaller than cl uh, claim. So that's why I call it S because it's basically smaller, but smaller not with respect to the numerical um, ordering that everybody's familiar with, but with the ordering that is fixed by this bijection B, right? B basically de uh, determines um, which which uh, real values are bigger than each other. So for example, uh, of course, in the real numbers, one half is smaller than two thirds. But if this projection kind of uh, flips um, these, um, the numbers around, like the numbers, uh, the correspondences around, then it could be that uh, because B is such that then the number two thir uh, thirds is smaller than one half with respect to uh, the ordering on so this b this uh, small uh, beta so this b, b is really just a reordering of the real numbers if you will here um but a well ordering um 
Okay. Um, so. Yeah, okay. And now something which uh, sounds unrelated, right? So denote by uh, sub, this is uh, the name for this proposition, the following claim. Um, if a set Y is bigger than another set X, then Y also has more subsets than X. Okay, sounds reasonable enough. Okay, but now the following. If this proposition sub holds, right? If, let's say we assume it's true, then the theorem allowing for the integrals to be switched around, you know, in, in uh, measure theory or integration theory or analysis um, doesn't actually hold for this S. If we allow this, uh, like if we are allowed, uh, uh, assume this, this claim, if you assume it's true, then it follows that actually this, uh, the in integrals can not be changed. And I can give you more information, it's because S ceases to be measurable. So somehow, <laughs> somehow <laughs> this claim has impact on the measurability of, the, of, this, of this function S. Um, okay, curious enough. Okay, now um, I will actually take this a step back and, um, and talk about uh, different similar uh, set theoretic questions that then lead up to the continuum hypothesis in a more modern formulation. Okay, so this is super, super like elementary. Let's say we have a set, it has two generic elements, you know, in Timmy Law, um, Frankel theory, theory, these elements will also be some sets. Um, we write, um, we use this notation to say X has two elements, and then we can compute the, the subsets. And again, in, the, in this classical framework, we can easily find, oh, these are the subsets. Um, then, how many subsets does this x actually have? Well, we can count. We find it's four. Four happens to be two to the power of two. If you do the same with this three element set, we can find the number of subsets. We find it's eight, it's two to the power of three. And you might know the number of sets, subsets of an L n element set, if it's finite and if we're using classical logic, then this is two to the power of the size of the set. So here's standard observation. This is really like just evident, like two is smaller than three, yeah. And also two to the power of two is smaller than two to the power of three. Five is smaller than nine, and two to the power of five is smaller than two to the power of nine. So, okay, we have uh, these ar arithmetic claims. We see that the power set, the size of the power set is given by two to the power of the size of the, um, the set. And and uh, cardinal wise this um, remains so then the question is does these these uh, order uh, relations um, will they hold uh, will, they, will they hold like for th this is a statement about the natural numbers you know this is pretty clear um, but now if we pass on to the sort of set theoretical foundation here this is exactly this uh, statement, except now we're considering general sets. They can also be infinite. Um, and this is the statement that I asked before. So if a set X is smaller than a set Y, does that mean it has also less subsets? You can think about it. You can think about to prove it here. I give you, I give you three seconds to think about a good proof for that. Well, it will depend on, to depend on your axiom set, of course, right? But the funny thing is that this statement is actually independent of Zemelo, Franklin, and Joyce. So it looks very elementary, um, but you can use a, a lot of very strong um, uh, set theoretical axioms, and you can actually use much stronger, like large cardinal axioms and whatnot. Uh, you will not be able to actually prove this, interestingly enough, from these axioms. Okay, um, but okay. Uh, this is uh, like, for example, I think this is a direct consequence then of the generalized continuum hypothesis, but let's go on uh, to the actual continuum hypothesis, right? Uh, which is a little bit more concrete than that. So yeah, um, here's a, a restatement. I talked about the number of subsets. I can also like talk about the number of characteristic functions, right? The functions from uh, the set into this two element set. Classically, this will be, um, exactly the same statement, essentially, 
um, constructively, characteristic functions are a little bit, or quite a bit uh, simpler to handle than subsets, subsets which uh, you know corresponds to the fact that subsets are attained with by the separation axiom. But okay, let's not get into uh, constructive set theory yet. Um, maybe in another video. But here, so I, I will uh, sorry, I will make some more statements, and you can think about them. Okay, so here is a conjunction. Is it possible? Uh, let me ask like that. Is it possible that you have a set S which is smaller than the uh, which is bigger than the natural numbers? A set S which is bigger than the set of natural numbers, but the number of subsets and uh, the size of the power sets is the same. Is it possible? Um, same condition, is it possible that you have uh, a set which is bigger than the natural numbers and the set is smaller than the number of subsets of the natural numbers? Right. This is essentially uh, an early version of the continuum hypothesis. Here, even more concrete, right? The the power set of the natural numbers corresponds also to the real. So, uh, th this is a variant of this of that statement here, um, where I, I like already replaced the p of n. I, I like to say the number of uh, you know I, I like to say the class of subsets of the natural numbers, which because this is the one of the most easiest ways to to define it. Um, but you can just say the real numbers, right? If you uh, know about all the, these correspondences and have the right axioms to set it up. Um, yeah, and here here's the same. This is the statement with the reals replaced. Uh, so these are all <laughs> all uh, like interesting questions. You, you can ponder a little bit about them. Um, but now I'll go on. Yeah, I, I make some uh, remarks. So as I already said, uh, characteristic function is a little bit easier to handle uh, constructively. Um, I will get into that in future videos. Um, but in any case, in this case, in this video, we speak about classical theory. That's the same thing. Um, and yeah, okay. And now uh, I just you know state the continuum hypothesis in in in, in a form. Uh, it's very similar to the one I already stated. So let s be a subset of the real number so it's a, this is a generic a priori a generic uh, set of real numbers uh, let's consider those which are not um, uh, finite or countable right the s shall be bigger is it the case that then this s is just as big as the real numbers that's a continuum hypothesis that's a statement which cannot be proven from similar frankel choice okay but there are other uh, formulations, and th this is sort of what we are going to get into before we come back to the integral statement. Uh, see why that makes sense. Um, okay, what, what kind of notes do I have here? Um, okay, I mentioned it already. Like, uh, as, whenever you demand, oh, there is a projection between these ordinals, these cardinals, then you might have to invoke the axiom of choice if you want to make these claims. Um, good. Uh, let me for a minute talk about uh, ordinal numbers. So maybe let, let's uh, make a break here and I will step through this sort of tabs I have open here um, because I have talked about ordinal numbers a couple of times on this YouTube channel before. Uh, these links are the ones you as always find at the bottom in the uh, GIST. Uh, Wikipedia article on the continuum hypothesis, uh, then the Stanford Encyclopedia article on it. Um, in my impredicativity video a month ago or two, I talked about papers by Pfefferman, who does did constructive theory. Some certainly knows what's up in set theory as well. He has an interesting uh, perspective, and in this paper I lays it out. And the paper is nice because it also has various reformulations in terms of different um, axioms. Uh, what's going to be relevant in the remainder of this video is the first uncountable ordinal. So you may uh, quickly skim that here. I will mention it anyway in a second. Um, but uh, 
this is just an omega one the the first ordinal you can think of for Neumann ordinals which has the size of the reals okay um so on uh, my youtube channel i talked about uh ordinal numbers before I, I think i motivated them more or less well here in this video where i describe omega uh, squared the countable ordinal omega squared and then there is this um, nice bijection between a relatively large uh, countable ordinal here where I map bijectively omega to omega to the omega. This is um, ordinal exponentiation. Um, these are the videos related where I in detail, in more detail explain ordinals, right? Um, I'm going to quickly summarize it in a second, but um, you might, uh, if you're interested in that, look into that. Okay, for Fubini's theorem, you know, just that you can switch the uh, integral, uh, integrals there, and of course there are then various reformulations. The one that's most relevant in this video is the Tonelli formulation, uh, where it speaks about measurable functions, because that's what we're going to break. Um, and then interesting is uh, in Zemilo Frankel, there is um, there is models where everything is measurable, right? That uh, excludes the axiom of choice because that implies uh, existence of non-measurable functions, giving giving rise um, to the famous some some of the famous paradoxes in set theory, um, Tarski paradox, and so on. Um, and also uh, this model rejects the continuum hypothesis as we will demonstrate in this video because the continuum hypothesis implies the existence of non-measurable functions uh, and then finally i have this uh, picture here uh, that i will uh, that i will use to motivate the proof that we're going to see okay so uh refresher i quickly explain the von neumann ordinals because the first uncountable ordinal in that sense will be relevant so we define the empty set, right? Add we say that there's just an empty set, which, which is a set which has no elements, or we say we define the empty set as the set of all elements um, for which the false statement holds. This is an example of a false statement. So this is a set which has no elements. The su successor operation, uh, S X means just the union of X and the singleton where uh, X is in it. And in this way, we can define natural numbers, right? The zero, which just mean the, the empty set. Uh, one is the success of zero, turns out to be this set, which has exactly one element. Two is the success of one, which turns out is exactly th this element, with, uh, this set with two elements and so on and so forth. Um, opa. Sorry. There is a typo here. Wait a minute. Um, namely, uh, this smaller relation is not what I want. I can correct it. This happened because I, I used the uh, search and replace functions to find good letters. Mm. Again, okay, so. Um, for this, for these uh, von Neumann ordinals, we define um, these the relation smaller than uh, just by this element relation. That we see the set three has uh, these elements in it, and one is smaller than three, is represented very nicely by the fact that one is member of three. Right? This just works out in the von Neumann ordinals, um, and then we can not just do the success operation, but we can also form limit ordinals by um, this collecting operations where we take anything. So we take, we like, <laughs> I don't talk about uh, set theoretical induction uh, here, but taking all these, these very finite objects and putting them all in, into one set gives an infinite set, uh, omega zero, which has all the natural numbers in it. And then we have that, but the success operation is still a, a basic set theoretical operation that we can do on any set. So we can do uh, omega zero plus one, right? This is just a set. I mean, you can see there's the second infinite set, um, 
but uh, it's not even necessary. We just consider it here, as I said, we don't have to make any these associations. Um, but the ordering is very nicely here, still defined. Okay, and, and so this goes on, we can define uh, all the arithmetic and all. Okay, and eventually, um, if uh, you, you let me write here, like we, we, we can define what is an ordinal, right? This this uh, transitive um, structure that I just defined. And um, so we can define the class of ordinals and we say, uh, we can then go on and define uh, omega one, which is what we want to get at. So omega one is all the uh, ordinals, all the sets which are ordinals. This is what this represents here, um, which are uh, finite or, or countable, right? So omega one is a set that has all the uh, finite or countable ordinals. And this limit ordinal uh, happens to be um, happens to be uncountable. So this is basically the you can think of it as the small smallest uncountable set, right? Um, so if in, in case you make the mistake in your head and think about the real numbers as the smallest um, uncountable set, well then you assume the continuum hypothesis already. This is wrong thinking, let's say. Um, uh, here, uh, from like you need to uh, assume less and get to this nice, nice set. You don't have to define any uh, like real arithmetic um, to get to this uncountable set. And uh, since you have these ordinals represent order types, um, you you don't get lower than that. And of course, you can also go on now. You can say. Or what is the second uncountable ordinal? Well, it's just the successor of that. But we're not interested in ordinals which are larger in this uh, this sense than omega one. We're interested in omega one, and we might introduce these notations, right? Aleph zero, aleph one. I'm not going to use aleph notation in the video, but it's, it's basically just it's basically just that. It's just notation. Um, and there is also like a, 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 an, another like a more abstract theory about of ordinals. You don't have to squeeze everything into the middle of Frankel set theory and define things like that, but it's possible. Um, that's that's what we are going to go here with this uh, representation by von Neumann. Okay, and um, so uh, with this, we have this formulation, right? Um, can I go there without spoiling? Yeah, okay. So if omega one, if you think of it as the smallest um, uncountable set, um, then we can ask these questions. Uh, is the small, sm the smallest, uh, is omega one the smallest uncountable uh, ordinal? Uh, is its cardinality, meaning is it in bijection to, uh, the map of uh, all characteristic functions from omega one, from basically the natural numbers, into a two element set, right? Or stated differently, Classically, is the size of uh, omega one the same size as that of the reals? In other words, is in other words, the continuum hypothesis says, are the reals actually a quite small set? Like, of course, the reals are big; they're an uncountable set, whatever big means. But the continuum hypothesis is that actually the reals or the 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 size of the class of the uh, subsets of the natural numbers or the size of these characteristic functions is as small as it could possibly be, right? So if this is true, then R is actually, in, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of uh, squeezed in, like at the very bottom of what it could be. That's that's hypothesis. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So since like I'm shielding constructive uh, logic a little bit on the channel, if you want to not assume too much about orderings and this gets harder in a constructive setting like ordering things and making decisions about um, uh, orderings deciding or uh, ordering then we can just say the hereditarily trans uh, transitive countable sets uh, the set of these sets um, and then we have something the classical equivalent to what I just defined here um, and also, like we can, we can put this the statement in a more category theoretical, error theoretic setting, right? 
we can say, um, you know, given a sequence of monos or injections, which I denote with this arrow here, there's also other ways of denoting injections, um, like graphically. So N in, uh, injects into S, injects into the exponential uh, object of N with omega and N is a natural number object. For example, in the category of sets, it will be uh, something as big as the uh, omega zero. Um, and the, you know, in, in topos theory, you have this um, truth value object and if it's Cartesian closed and you can exponentiate it and then get that and you can define uh, uh, monomorphisms very abstractly. And then uh, the statement is uh, that, that as soon as you have that, then one of those is actually a, like an, a, an isomorphism. So either th this only works because S is actually isomorphic down or because it's isomorphic there. So this is basically S is like the natural numbers or S is like the real numbers, nothing in between. So this is a purely error theoretical statement if you're into that. Um, I have not linked it here, but there is this book, uh, Sheaves in Geometry and Logic um, on Topos Theory, that discusses these sort of perspectives and even discusses pers perspectives on forcing. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we get to the end. Um, so we are back at the the uh, statement, you know, the wild statement where I said we have this interval between the numbers between zero and one. Um, we have some ordinal which is in correspondence to that you know now you see this is basically uh, the continuum hypothesis fixes this the continuum hypothesis fixes that beta must be the smallest uncountable ordinal omega one right the continuum hypothesis is the idea that the real numbers are as small as they could possibly be uncountable but not too far out um we define the function as before. And then the statement is, if the continuum hypothesis holds, in other words, if beta has the size of omega one, the smallest uncountable ordinal, then S is not measurable, okay? And um, the proof is as follows, and this is almost the end of the video. Okay, so uh, let's say beta is omega one, then if you fix a Y, Okay, then the set of all x's that are smaller with respect to the induced ordering, um, this is a null set. This is because in, in omega 1 are all the ordinals that are smaller than omega 1, right, per definition. Um, and the uh, we set up omega one to be the set which holds all the countable ordinals, right? So whenever you choose any element in omega one, right, uh, then then everything below this element that you chose can only be countable, right? It can can you can only you can get there from from below by counting. Um, if that makes sense. So I, I will, I have a picture in a second. Um, but okay. So, uh, I, I will elaborate it in a second, but let's go on. Okay. Here. Um, similarly, f if you fix any X, then all Y's such that X is smaller than Y, i.e. all, uh, elements that are bigger than it. This is the, also the complement of a, a null set in a in a measure theoretical terms. So again, if you take omega one, take any element, then the set of all ordinals which is above it, this is actually an uncountable set by the definition of omega one is an un uncountable set. I mean, we have not, we have not proven here that, uh, the set of all countable se uh, ordinals is uncountable, but I suppose 
you can easily believe it, right? So otherwise, you you can you can get this set as a member of itself situation. So I have not proven formally that omega one is uh, is actually an un uncountable set the way it defined it. Like I defined it as let's go back here again. So we said um, here our definition was all the ordinals that are uh, finite or countable. This then turns out to be like very quickly uh, can be shown. This is an uncountable set. And so Omega one has uncountably many elements. If you take any particular element in it, then the left hand side, so to speak, is uh, smaller than the right hand side, right? Because if you take any element in it, then there's uncountably many elements that are uh, that are uh, bigger than it. Right? This is uh, the set itself is uncountable. If you take any element, then on the right side, so to speak, all the elements that are bigger than it, that's that's always uncountable. Um, and and so this is a null set. This is actually uh, the complement of a null set. So um, if f s were measurable, then we ha would have the following. So zero, if you do this integral like the inner integral uh, for fixed y over x, then by the first argument here, you get zero. Then by uh, Fubini Tonelli, we can switch the integral signs, right? Assuming that s is measurable. And then uh, here we get one because uh, this is the complement of the null set in i, uh, which has size one, okay? And so assuming S is measurable would give us zero is one. So we find, assuming the continuum hypothesis, that S can actually not be measurable. Okay, and uh, so I try to, uh, to make my hand waving here a little bit clearer with a picture, it's also hand waving, but maybe you have already like uh, uh, crocked it. So I have here this, this image, self-drawn, by the way. <laughs> so, okay, so here we have um, the, the, this top uh, interval uh, corresponds to the interval, it basically corresponds to omega one, right? This is the set of all um, elements in omega one. So it, this cont contains all finite and countable ordinals. Um, it starts at zero, of course, the empty set. Uh, and then it has all the, the ordinals. I, I wrote a few. I ha it has one, it has two, it has three, it has 49, it has uh, om w, here denotes uh, the, uh, omega one. So this is the, the natural numbers, the natural numbers, the three times the successor of it, the natural numbers squared, like the ordinal natural numbers squared, this ordinal exponentiation here, uh, then omega to the om omega. This is what I uh, did the video about. This is also a countable set. You can go further than that. And, and this, of course, goes on. There's like much bigger countable uh, ordinals than, than just these few examples. Um, but all of these are countable and the, the totality of them, the, the, the set of those, this is omega one. This is what has, um, is uncountable. And um, if now we assume the uh, continuum hypothesis in this, in this hard sense that we have a projection, um, then to the, this is the interval, the real interval, you know, this is the real number one, this is the real number zeros. Here is, is also an ordering, but just a numerical ordering. Or here is one over pi, it's roughly one third. Um, here's one half, it's not really in the middle, but <laughs> excuse me. Then here 0 0.97 and so on. And this, this is the projection, right? This is the B, the correspondence between omega one and this interval. So, and here you maybe you can be lifted uh, easily with what I said before. Uh, let's pick any element. Let's pick omega to the um, omega to the omega, like omega one to the omega one, right? Um, this is a countable, or countable ordinal, so you can actually um, with uh, you can actually take this set and put it in, into correspondence, like the, all the elements here in, into correspondence with the natural numbers, right? On the other hand. The whole thing must be uncountable. So 
this uh, in this direction it it never stops but in an uncountable fashion right so this is uh, in a sense quote unquote denser the right hand side is always denser than the left hand side right and so for any fixed number like for example if we take this number 0 0.97 then the 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 number of reals that are smaller than this number with respect to the order on omega 1 is just this null set right this is just this 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 natural number like um size um and in fact um yeah it, it, it's easier to see it from from uh maybe from the other side like the number of uh, elements that are bigger or hotter in my picture than this number is an uncountable set because the whole thing is uncountable okay and oh so and and th that's what we see here so um here we have the, the square that we are going to integrate over, right? With uh, Fubini in two ways. If we fix any y, let's say here, then um, then uh, the number of elements that are smaller are this uh, are this null set. So this is like it's not as dense. It's just it's just what is here. Um, on the other hand, if we, if we fix a y and consider what is bigger, then this is this uncountable set. Right? Okay. I hope that uh, that motivates this, and this uh, continues to prove. Of course, uh, you can now uh, go on and formalize this a little bit better with actual measures and measure theory, right? Translate this uh, this uh, d-axis into these proper measures and define actually uh, these these sets um, and and speak about uh, their finite and uncountable and um, countable character um but that's the gist of it uh of course um if you assume uh, temelo frankel choice if you assume the axiom of choice which you may need for these projections to exist then alone by the axiom of choice there already exists non-measurable functions right so um this is just a world if you assume the continuum hypothesis this then actually implies um, something which you already had, namely these ugly non-measurable functions. On the other hand, if you add the axiom or if you study the model where everything is measurable, then this rejects these sort of axioms. Then the continuum hypothesis uh, here cannot hold because the continuum hypothesis, as we see here, implies uh, non-measurable sets, functions. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, and, and finally some remarks. Uh, so uh, this was then uh, like decades later shown to uh, this con conjecture by Cantor, the continuum hypothesis to be independent of Cimelo Frankel choice even. Um, and and roughly uh, it goes like this. Oh, there's a bracket too much. Ignore this bracket. Um, so you you have uh, these these functions from omega two times omega one into the um, into the, this binary uh, set and uh, then uh, you know with this junction you had this map into this space and um, Cohen then finds actually this injection of this quite large uh, ordinal into this object um, which which then uh, breaks which breaks then the the the, the relation that is conjectured by Cantor, namely the, the 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 power set basically taking the power set from natural numbers jumps actually over this this first ordinal um this first uncountable ordinal and since that is the case in the model uh the axioms cannot cannot prove it uh the continuum hypothesis um yeah and the moral of the story is that the the set of all subsets, or we should rather say the class of all subsets of natural numbers, rather in, in a, like if you have already the constructive head on, um, then this is like a very like elusive sort of set. This very, it can be very big and then there like set theorists study what can this, 
this uh, set of subsets B. Um, and really, we don't really know what a what a power set is. It's just too powerful. <laughs> it's um, it's 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 just too too elusive. Um, and in that way, uh, my next video will also be about the power operation, although not on an infinite set, uh, on just a very small set. Um, more evidence for the fact that power sets are difficult. Uh, but in that, that case, uh, it, it will be a, a di different kind of difficult. It, it, it will be about a more constructive view on power sets. Uh, constructively, again, the, the characteristic functions are simpler and you can phrase the continuum hypothesis well into, in terms of characteristic functions and ordinals as well. So, or or an, an other uncountable sets <laughs> if you don't have ordering. But okay, um, so that's that for the minutes. Yeah. Uh, Almost good for me. <laughs> uh, I wish you a good evening.